So in this video, I want to talk about the art of fearless seduction. This is the new book I have coming out, and I want to talk about the principles that are in that book and how you can start utilizing them today to change your life. You see, the really being good with women, being able to seduce and become a powerful seducer, having amazing sex, having a great life comes from being embodied. Embodiment leads to flow states. Flow states leads to freedom, leads to opening the heart, leads to joy. You see, life is a series of many flow states when it's working. I'm going to say that again. Life is a series of many flow states when it's working. You go into flow in your daily work. You go into flow when you're out flirting. You go into flow when you're with your guy friends, you're having a good time. You go into flow when you're seducing or being seduced. You go into flow when you're fucking and you're going deep and low in your body. That happens from embodiment. This is why athletes get the girls. This is why the artists get the girls. Not because they said everything just right. It's because they felt it. They might have said things wrong in a lot of ways, but they felt it. They changed. They adjusted. They flowed. So let's play with this for a minute. Think about this for a minute. You go out to you learn a bunch of pickup techniques. They tell you the exact things to say. Um, one of the ones I learned when I first started, and I use it all the time, is you look like trouble. And I'd walk up and say something like, oh, hi, you look like trouble. And I'd be a nervous wreck. I'd be in my head. It didn't always work. Sometimes it worked a little bit. Sometimes it didn't work. And it really had an interesting effect. As I started to get more embodied, though, it started to work more and more. See, the standard hi didn't really work at all for me. I'd walk up and I'd say, hi, my name is Brian. What you, what are you, how are you today? And I literally probably wouldn't say it that well even. I'd probably be really in my head, locked out, head forward. Hi, my name is Brian. Uh, how you doing? How you having a good night? And it would be awkward and it would be weird and it would be strange. So then I started using you look like, hi, you look like trouble. And that didn't work a lot of times either. But once in a while, I would get a girl to respond because it was a little polarizing. Then I'd work through that. And what I found is that I got more embodied. I learned to feel my heart. I learned to feel my stomach. I learned to feel my turn on. I learned to ground. The more high just worked. I was able to walk up and go, hey, how you doing? My name's Brian. What's your name? And there was a different flow to it, a different feeling to it. You see, when people socialize, they love to flow. They don't want to think. They want to be embodied. When you're with your best friend, you don't think about what to say. You just kind of flow. Hey, blah, 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 blah. You know, hanging out together. I'm going to give you a simple homework assignment. Go out and watch girls when they all get together at the end of the day and they're all flowing and gabbing and having a good time at the bar. They're not thinking. When she's sharing sadness, she responds with sadness when she's sharing something that like turned her on. This, this guy was so naughty and he said this to me and the other girl responds in kind. They're playing with emotions back and forth. Well, the art of fearless seduction is about teaching this level of embodiment. And this level of embodiment leads to more and more many flow states, which is where you become really powerful in communication. One of the first things you're going to learn and that you should learn, we got videos on all of this. So if you don't want to buy the book, just go look at my videos and start piecing it all together. But, the, but I'm going to tell you, the book puts it all into a nice format for you to really build a structure. And the, one of the first things that you're going to learn is grounding. I talk a lot about grounding. Learn to ground because without a ground, energy is going to build up in your body and you're going to become reactive. Think about a car battery. If your car battery is loose, the car is not going to start all the time. There's going to be problems starting. If it's not connected, if there's no grounding altogether, I'm talking about the grounding wire. If the grounding wire is not connected altogether, the car is not going to start at all. You need a grounding wire. And what a grounding wire does, it allows the kinetic energy to flow through and out of you so it doesn't build up in your body so you don't become reactive. If I was really nervous, and again, I walk up to a girl and I said, hey, you look like trouble, and I was worried about what she thought of me, I might start tightening and micro-tightening all over the place, causing a sense of reactivity or nervousness to how she's being. I might go up and say, hey, you look like trouble, and then like this, that weirdness that happens, versus, hey, you look like trouble, knowing I can relax and let everything she says go right through me. That's what grounding does. It allows you to stay calm under pressure. Now, for this example today, I'm going to tell a story. I had a girlfriend. Uh, she was awesome. Little Colombian girl. She was beautiful. And she cooked me dinner one night. Came over to her house, sat down at the table, started to eat that awesome Colombian meal. And then suddenly she says, Brian, we need to talk. And I know this tone. I know this voice. I didn't get reactive to it. The old me would have been really reactive and nervous. And, oh, shit. What did I do wrong? Oh, God, we got to deal with this. The new me just turned, put down the fork, got really present with her and said, uh, yeah, what's up, what's up? All right, I don't know if I said what's up, but I said something. And then she looked at me, she goes, well, 
sometimes I, I've been thinking about this a lot and I think you just want me for sex. My logical brain, my male brain said, that doesn't make sense. This week we went out to dinner, went to the movies, we went here, we spent time together and I've been really busy at work, so it doesn't make sense at all. And the old me would have explained that, but the new me said, no, wait a minute, let me connect with her. Let me look into her a little bit. Let me be really present with her. And I said, what is she really saying? And I saw the worry on her face. I felt all that worry. You can get reactive to any of it. The old me would have been, oh, I gotta get rid of her pain. I gotta fix her. I, gotta, I can't have her unhappy. The new me's like, oh, it's okay. She's fine. She can handle it. She can handle emotions. She's female. She probably handled better than me. And so I just looked at her and I was present with her. And then suddenly it hit me. By being really still in the body, letting everything flow through me, all the pieces came together because that's what the gut brain does, which we're gonna talk about that in a little bit too. The gut brain puts it all together and makes it make sense. And by not getting my analytical mind involved and being really present, feeling every little emotion, I was, it, this answer came to me. She's missing connection. I've been so busy this week working that even when I took her out, I was half distracted by work. Duh, she needs more connection. And that's almost always the problem with a really feminine person. Sometimes they're just not feeling you fully there and they're worried you don't care anymore. So I stood up and I said, come here. And she went, what? I grabbed her hand, walked in the bedroom, picked her up, threw her on the bed, the opposite of what you would think you would do. I'd, the old me would have tried to explain, and, uh, and, but the new me is like, nope. And then she's like, what are you doing? And I laid down next to her and I held her and I opened my heart to her. I let the heart do the talking. I connected, I laughed with her, I joked with her. That problem never came up again. She never said that again because I really connected with her. Now that started with grounding. That started with me grounding out how she was being and not getting reactive to it. The next thing that happened was I got vulnerable with her. I opened up my heart to her. I felt her with my heart. And I started to be really present. I, mean, I, I was okay with her vulnerability. I was okay with my vulnerability. And so I started to practice that. And that's, those are practices around learning to open and move and develop vulnerability. And you can look those up as a, on Fearless as a, you know, opening your heart or using the body scan meditation kind of helps open this whole area up. Great ways to, to really work on that. The next thing that also uh, came with that is tension. I had to step into tension. How did I do that? Tension is, is, is that when a, a guy can handle the shit when the shit hits the fan. In primitive times, it would have meant I need to go out hunting. I need to go out protecting. Uh, I need to step in and set a boundary with a woman. I need to say no to a woman. I need to lead us into something that might be scary, that might get me rejected. But you know what? This needs to be done right now. I need to step in this tension because this is the right thing to do. So how did I do that? I said, come here. And I grabbed her hand. I walked in the bed. I picked her up and I threw her on the bed. And I said, this is where we're going with this. If you want to have this talk, let's do this. Because that's what my gut told me to do. And boom, it nailed. She loved it. She giggled. We laughed. We had a great time together. We connected. And then I got back to my cold dinner later. And so the next thing that was really important is, is let's see, we've got grounding. We've got um, heart and vulnerability. We've got stepping into tension. And tension is so important. I got tons of videos on that. Another one is turn on. You got to get access to your turn on. You see so many guys are approaching women with no or numbed out turn on and they, and because they don't want to be creepy, but then they just become nice guy friends. Or some guys bring turn on with no vulnerability. That's another problem. But getting access to your turn on is just getting access to your creative energy, your passion, your desire to take action. That all happens down in the hip area and allows you to really feel your hips and, and move from your hips. So if I'm coming from the heart, it's like, hey, what's up? How you doing? If I'm coming from the turn on, I'm dropping lower down. It's like, hey, what's up? How you doing? And I might talk to my girl, come here, baby, from the turn on. I might talk to my girl, come here, baby, what's up? And there's two different energies there. We're flowing. We're playing. So with tension, I might be like, come here, you need a smack on the ass. You've been bad today, right? I'm playing with tension. And I'm playing with a little bit of heart energy in that one and a small amount of turn on. Or I might say, come here, I'm gonna smack you on the ass. You've been bad today. Dropped a little lower into that turn on. Starting to play with it. It's all embodiment. It comes down to simple highs. Hi, hi from the heart. Hi from the stomach, hi. Coming down towards the turn on. What's up? And you start to play lower in the body, 
flowing up and down through feeling. That is embodiment. Another one is conduit, this ability to channel and direct these energies. That's what I've been doing this whole video. It's like if I see her, I need to direct the energy right at her, or I can just be open. I can be open with my heart to the whole room. Hey, how's everybody doing? Or I can look at an individual. Hey, how you doing? And I can really channel that energy. That's done with control through the frontal lobe, or they would call it the sixth chakra, frontal lobe, prefrontal cortex, this, this area of the brain. And it's really powerful when you learn to focus it and uh, developing techniques to learn to focus that better. I've got a lot of talks on that. So look that, look that up. Uh, and power of intention is another powerful uh, uh, thing you can look up on, on the YouTube channel. But it's also in the book, The Art of Fearless Seduction, where you have exercises for all of this stuff. And then the last thing that I wanna talk about today is container. The ability to contain the room and create a space for her to become fully feminine for you. You see, she can create her own container. Women do it all the time. But when they're on a date with a sexy guy, they want the guy to take the container so she can surrender and become totally feminine for him. You can polarize and have amazing sex together. So she can become your girl. So you can become her man. This is my guy. She's my girl. And that, that's powerful because now you're in a crowded bar, people are bumping into her and she's trying to talk to you because she likes you. You start to take control. You move over here, you slide her over here, you put her in a safe space where she can be really feminine. She can relax. She doesn't have to worry about all this. And then she can start to open all that feminine sexual energy to you. You can start to flirt, tease, dance back and forth. That is so powerful. So there's many chapters in this book, but these are some of the basic principles I wanted to cover because each one of these leads to flow state. As you put them all together and you start to get more grounded, you start to step more into your heart, you start to create, uh, create step more into your turn on, you start to create a nice container, you channel your intention, um, you start to move into these mini flow states. And I'm big on mini flow states. I wanna create a whole book on mini flow states for life, flow state in the morning for work, flow state in your exercise. You know, not just these big flow states that everybody talks about, going into a flow state and doing three flips on my snowboard. And that's, that's great that these pro snowboarders can do that. But life really happens. Life is really fun and awesome and beautiful when we live in these mini flow states. It's moving us towards this highly conscious place of being because life should happen in flow states. We should be turned on for our life. We should be turned on for action in our life. And that's what this book's really about. It's being turned on for women, being turned on for approaching and meeting women, being turned on for getting results and being turned on for taking action in life. So if you're ready to start understanding these principles, that's where this book can take you. It starts moving in the direction of these mini flow states, something we call feeling. And feeling is part of vulnerability. And feeling leads to flow. When you're in feeling, you're learning to become super sensitive to the energy of the environment, the vibrational energies back and forth. You start to recognize the difference in different tonalities and how they affect you. You start to recognize the difference when she drops low in her body down towards her turn on, starts to get a little wet for you, or when she drops up into her body and opens her heart for you. And you start to really, or when she pulls back, something's said and she pulls back. And you, instead of getting reactive because you're grounding them out, you just adjust. You don't get reactive. You stay proactive and adjust, and not just with her, with other people in your life, your family, maybe your children. You start to connect and become more solid as a father. Uh, maybe your mother, your father, you start to build better relationships and sales. You start to get more sales. This is what embodiment's about. It's about changing every aspect of your life. So if you're ready for a big shift in this area, you can take these topics, look them up on our YouTube channel and find more videos on them. But if you want some simple resource where you can really take a look at all of these together and see them kind of put together, check out the Art of Fearless Seduction. There's a link somewhere in this video to learn more about it. There will be a digital copy and a print copy. If you want the print copy, we definitely, uh, you, you'll, you'll get a copy of both uh, when, you, when you buy this book. And um, there'll be more information about it in the link. Definitely check it out right now. Also comment in the video. I'd love to hear your comments, what you think of the video, what you're learning. Can you see this all coming together? Do you see it happening in your life? Are you starting to apply these principles? We have a lot of students who've been applying the principles of fearless for a while now that are actually starting to use this stuff. And I definitely want you guys to get on there and comment so the other guys, the new guys can see how much it's changing your lives. So please do that for us. Also uh, like the button, hit that, smash that, beat that like button, whatever you need to do. Share the video if you haven't shared it because these videos really help other people and it's growing our channel, which helps us to put out more content. And uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And with that said, remember, only the confident really live. I'll see you in the next video. Take care and have a beautiful day.